Hello and welcome to Precon Decon, the video series where I deconstruct the pre-constructed decks of Magic the Gathering's history. In this video we're going to start looking at Guild Pact, and uh, as you can probably tell from the background we're going to start looking at uh, Code of the Orzov, which is the black-white deck and represents the Orzov Guild. So yeah, let's uh, let's start looking at the deck list here. So uh, 26 creatures, which is uh, yeah, a fair amount. Two sorceries, six enchantments, two instants, 24 land, mana curve off to the side there. Uh, let's dive in and start looking at these creatures. So, the Orzhov. Um, they've had a rocky road, honestly, in terms of their guild mechanics, uh, which, I mean, I'll discuss in this video. Um, I like the Orzhov, personally. Um, they're one of my favourite guilds from Ravnica. I love the fact they're basically spooky religious ghost mafia, essentially. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, you know, this is going off tangent. I just really like the mix of... Uh, of like the opulent and the grotesque, which I always find like black white cards do really well. I just think it's that's just a vibe I really like, and like kind of creepy religious stuff. That's 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 my jam, you know. So yeah, I do like the yours of. Um, it's just a shame this kind of like their initial outing is is a little disappointing. Um, but yeah, you know, we'll look at the cards individually, and I'll sort of talk about why I think that. Uh, so uh, let's talk about the two rares of the deck first. So the first rare is uh, Taser, Orzhov Scion. Uh, one white and black for a 2-3. Um, sacrifice three white creatures to exile a creature. Uh, and whenever another black creature you control dies, you put a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token into play. So, uh, yeah, obviously this kind of feeds itself if you can sacrifice... Uh, you know, you've got black and white creatures dying because then it sort of feeds itself, so... Yeah, if uh, you have three creatures that are black and white, you can sacrifice them to exile the creature, and then you also then get three white spirits because you've sacrificed three black creatures, and then you could then sacrifice those spirits to do it again. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I like Taser. Uh, just the fact that her ability doesn't require like mana or tapping at all, I think that's you know that's actually pretty strong. Uh, yeah, I think she's actually like a pretty good uh, kind of engine to get going in this deck. And as we'll see, there is kind of like a sacrifice element throughout the deck, just um, just because of how it works with uh, the uh, the guild's keyword in this set. So the other rare of the deck is Skeletal Vampire, which is uh, is a card that I think it's I I don't know for some reason this got reprinted like a lot. It had like a a period of time where it was just in so it was like in every pre constructed product because um, I think it was in a couple of dual decks. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, Skeletal Vampire. It's actually it's actually not too bad, so I don't mind. Uh, so six mana for a three three flyer. Uh, when it comes into play, you get two uh, one one black bats, uh, which is good because that helps uh, Taser. Uh, you can pay three and two black to sacrifice a bat, and then you basically turn one bat into two bats, which is pretty cool. Um, and then you can sacrifice a bat to regenerate Skeletal Vampire. Uh, so this guy is just a token generator. Uh, really, it's kind of there just to um, I do I think really support Taser just with that get that engine running. Um, you know, when they die, you get spirits and all that kind of stuff. Um, and also just provide, um, sort of creatures in the air to swing with just a bunch of kind of, uh, disposable creatures. Cause you know, cause you can block with a bat and then before damage is done, you sacrifice it and you then make two more bats and yeah. Uh, so scale, it's a little expensive, I think, but, um, yeah, not all, I mean, what, six mana to get five powers worth of flying on the board. Yeah. Actually not terrible. Not terrible. It's okay. It's okay. Skeletal vampire. Yeah. Uh, and then we have two blind hunters. Uh, so now we get to talk about the also of uh, keyword. So two white black for a two two flying. Uh, when it comes into play, uh, all the creature it haunts is put into a graveyard. Target player loses two life. You gain two life. So what is haunt? Which is a valid question because haunt is um, definitely not a uh, popular or well remembered keyword. So haunt is uh, when it dies. When the blind hunter dies, it is then exiled. Um, but then also you say it's haunting a creature, um, which can be yours, it can be an opponent's creature. And then when the creature that's haunted dies, you get the effect again. So it's this very, <laughs> it's this very roundabout way of just kind of getting its, um, ability twice, essentially. Um, as I say, there is a sacrifice theme. So I think the best thing to do would be to haunt one of your own creatures, like a token or something. Um, 
or something that you're going to sacrifice for one of the effects in the deck. So, and then, you know, you get the double trigger of it. The, you know, the problem is, you know, when it, you know, it dies, uh, when it dies, it is exiled. You can't get this back again. You can't keep repeating it. Um, not that you've got any raised dead effects, I think, in the deck, but yeah, that is just the thing. When it dies, it is, it turns into a ghost. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know if this was the, the best mechanic, um, cause you know, all sorts are meant to have this connection to ghosts and stuff. Um, but I just think later sets do do a better way of conveying that the the Orzhov theme. Anyway, and then we have a single Belfry Spirit. Uh, so five mana for a one one. Um, so this is kind of I think just worse skeletal vampire. Uh, so five mana for one one flyer. Um, when it comes into play, you get two um, black bats, and uh, when it it has haunt, so uh, you get the effect as well. When the creature it haunt it haunts dies as well. Um, so I guess you could haunt one of the bats, I suppose, that it makes. Um, yeah. But again, what's this is what, five mana to make three power worth of creatures on with flying? Uh it's a little it's a little overcosted, I think. Um there is I suppose there is the potential that you get it twice, but then it's just jumping through so many hoops just to get uh four like one one flying tokens. Um yeah, it's alright. Uh two infectious host, uh so three mana for one one. Uh, when it dies, a player loses two life. Fine, again, ties into the sacrifice theme. It's a creature you kind of want to die. It's good sacrifice fuel, I suppose. Um, you can be kind of aggressive with it. Um, a, you know, a good thing to haunt, I suppose. But, you know, kind of a little overcosted for what it does, in my opinion. Um, a single martyred Rusalka. So this is a cycle in Guild Pact. These Rusalkas, who are all one mana spirits, uh, for what, uh, they're all one ones and they all have an ability that requires on like sacrificing a creature so definitely what this deck wants it wants to be sacrificing creatures so you have haunt triggers uh going off again uh martyred rusalka is kind of i think maybe the weakest of the rusalkas maybe no the green one is really dreadful the what yeah this one's okay this one's in the middle of the pack um i think the black one is the best one which is also in this deck um but the red one's actually pretty good as well uh so martyred rusalka one white mana for a one one uh one white sacrifice creature target creature can't attack this turn um sure <laughs> you know it stops a big attacker i guess and it helps you hit your your sacrifice triggers um your haunt triggers even. Uh yeah, it's it's all it's all right. <laughs> it's okay, I suppose. Um yeah. But yeah, probably probably could do better with this. Um I kind of actually wish what the Orzhov had had would have been I don't know, make them almost like a make them care more about spirits, because like that's the whole thing, is that um that uh, this is really off topic, this is like background stuff. But the whole point is um they are essentially like money lenders and like if you can't repay your debts they like enslave your spirit um so they have this big kind of you know creepy ghosty thing so i kind of wish they'd had more stuff to do with spirits like kind of it would be nice actually because following on from kamigawa then you could uh you know merge in you could kind of have spirit interactions that kind of um span the span the gap so to speak but anyway it it is what it is. Um then we have two also of euthanists. Um so three mana for a two two with haunt. Uh when he enter when he comes into play, all the creature he haunts dies, uh destroy a creature that was dealt damage this turn. So kind of see this ability in black a few times. Uh this kind of um what's the best word for it? What's the to, fatal blow, I think was the first uh black card that did this, like uh, it was a, a black removal spell back in Mirage, I think, which uh, destroyed a creature as long as it had taken damage that turn so it d it does require like a little setup but um i mean it's okay because obviously you can swing with it and if it dies in combat and it doesn't kill you know whatever whatever blocked it then at least it dies and then you can oh no that's when it when it comes to play oh the creature at haunts you can do that with the creature at haunts yeah <laughs> i keep keep forgetting how haunt works because it's it's such a i don't know it's just a weird uh i don't know weird to commit to memory mechanic anyway and then two thought picker which is this is a really good sacrifice out there i think so one black mana for one one uh one sacrifice creature look at the top two cards of an opponent's library exile one of them that's just i think a pretty strong ability and like worth sacrificing stuff to i think just to uh continually exile stuff off the top of uh an opponent's uh library and the fact it requires colorless mana in a two color deck i think is is worth something as well uh so yeah i, I quite like thought picker witch 
Uh, and then I get into get some cards which I, I consider more classically yours of. These were the ones that were more popular, like, in my playgroup um, at the time. So Agent of Masks is, I think, this absolute classic, really classic Orsov card. And it does what I think people wanted Orsov to do, which was, like, just drain life rather than play around with all this haunt stuff. Uh, so three colours, one white, one black. Uh, for a 2-3, uh, the being of your upkeep, each opponent loses one life and you gain life equal to the life lost this way. So, yeah, this used to be really popular. We used to play, like, four-player games. So someone would play Agent of Masks and then they're getting three life every turn and slowly draining everyone else down. So, yeah, Agent of Masks was uh, was great. Um, yeah, really like it. This thing, I think it's got a um, reprint in Theros, maybe? Or maybe, like, a Theros-adjacent product. It had, um, yeah, maybe, like, a modern... Uh, Modern Horizons or something. You got like Theros art, and uh, yeah, it's very cool. Anyway, uh, two Morning Thrall. Uh, Morning Thrall's great. Love Morning Thrall. Uh, one one colors some one uh white black hybrid mana for a one one with flying and lifelink. Yep, perfect. Everyone <laughs> everyone really loved this card. Uh, just yeah, just does just you know it's fine, perfectly fine. Really good early game creature to deal with, and it's very annoying to deal with as well. Um, because you know, because it's so small at one one, but like you don't want to keep letting it through and letting someone gain life. You know? Uh, Souls of the Faultless. This is another classic Orsov card. Uh, one colorless and two black for a naught four defender. Uh, whenever it's dealt combat damage, you gain that much life, and the attacking player loses that much life. So really, really good deterrent to slap down because no one wants to like attack into this. Um, yeah. Really, really good. Really like Souls of the Faultless. And uh, yeah, the efforts people went to to try and deal with this out of combat was uh, was great. Yeah, really like Souls of the Faultless. Uh, yeah, I, th I think does... Yeah, and again, it's like another spirit as well. So I'm going back to like uh, Orzhov should have more more kind of spirit interactions. But anyway, anyway. Uh, and then a single Orzhov Guild Mage. Um, so two, like all the Guild Mages, two hybrid mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Um... I'm just gonna say I think that's the best art in of all the guild mages. This one looks great. Um, that's such good art. It's just unfortunate that um, I think its abilities are a little underwhelming. Uh, so two colors and one white to uh, make target player gain one life, which is I mean that's very expensive. I think for three mana. Uh, the second ability I think is a little better. Two colors and one black to make each player lose one life. That's obviously better. Um, but yeah, just that art is so good. So, so good. And yeah, really, going back to what I said, like really good, creepy, <laughs> you know, religious priest art. Love it. Love it. Absolutely my jam. Anyway, uh, then move on to uh, some uh, some more creatures here because there's very, a lot of creatures in this deck, which is fine because that's obviously what you want to haunt, I suppose. Uh, two Ostiary Thralls. Uh, so four mana for a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, it has one white tap, tap target creature. So it's kind of an expensive master decoy, honestly. Um, you're paying two extra mana just for an extra power, really. Um, I will, you know, master decoy is like my benchmark, which I compare all these kind of tap creatures to. Um, you know, at least the ability is cheap to use, but um, yeah, it's obviously this guy's initially expensive to get down. Um, a single play Rusalka, uh, so there's Black Rusa the Black Rusalka, so one black mana for 1-1. One, one. one black sacrifice creature, target creature gets minus one, minus one to then 10. Probably the best, um, or joint best of the Rusalkas, the red one's really good as well. Um, just because it's like creature kill, yeah, you can kill off a bunch of small creatures with this, yeah, or X, you know, X1s, yeah, really good. Like play Rusalka. Kind of wish there'd been another one of this in here, honestly. And then, um, weirdly... I really don't know why this is in here. Poison Belly Ogre. So five mana for a three three. Uh, whenever another creature comes into play, its control loses one life. Um, not what this deck wants to be doing, I suppose. It is. I mean, it would drain everyone, I suppose. But like, you're playing quite a creature heavy deck. You're making a lot of tokens and stuff. So um, yeah, I don't know if this would really gel with what the deck's trying to do. Um, a weird, a weird choice to include. I think in terms of like it being a creature, I think it's okay. Um, you know, obviously, five mana for a three three with no other abilities is okay, and like you know, this kind of symmetrical ability is all right. But um, yeah, I don't think it really belongs in this deck, honestly. I don't, yeah, I don't think it's a good fit. Uh, and then two shrieking grotesques. Uh, so two colors and one white for a two one flyer. Uh, when it comes into play, if black was spent to cast it, uh, target player discards a card. So in the previous set, we had spells which were or you know non creature spells which gave you an effect and if you spent mana of the um the other you know the 
the other mana color of the guild, you got an extra effect. So now in Guild Pact, we have that cycle continue, but now I think it's all creatures that have that. And then in Dissension, in the last one, they they sort of put another variant on it. But yeah, Shrieking Grotesque, I think, is fine. Um, yeah, paying one colorless, one black, and one white for a 2 1 with flying that makes someone discard. Um, yeah, that's fine, I think. That's fine. Perfectly fine. Uh, two Hissing Miasma, another good kind of deterrent card. Uh, one colors and two black enchantment. Whenever a creature attacks you, the controller loses one life. Um, yeah, really adds up. Um, really happy there's two of them in here. Um, yeah, I think Hissing Miasma is a is a again good solid good solid card. It's kind of what the deck wants to be doing, like stalling out and uh, discouraging your opponent from attacking. Uh, two Pillory of the Sleepless. Um, I really like this. Uh, black pacifism, basically. Um, yeah, it's pacifism with like extra life loss, uh, which is really good. Again, you just uh, put it on a creature. It's pacified, and then also it starts slowly draining uh, the uh, the controller for one life every every upkeep, which is which is pretty good. Like Pillar of the Sleepless uh, again, like in the, what I consider another really classic Orzhov card. Uh, two strands of undeath, uh, for three colors, one black for an aura. Goes on a creature. Uh, when it comes into play, target player discards two cards, and the enchanted creature can regenerate for a single black mana. That's pretty okay, I think. Uh, considering what mind rot is, two colors and one black to discard two. So really, for the extra mana, you're giving a creature very cheap regeneration, which is excellent, I think. Um. There was a whole cycle of these kind of auras that had like a um had an effect when they came into play, and then they gave kind of like a, a small ongoing effect. So like Fist of Ironwood, which is when you cast it, you got two saplings, and then the enchanted creature just had like trample. Um or the red one, which was really good, which was um it was three damage to any target, I think, and then also just got first strike. So yeah, the, all these kind of like comes into play auras were really good. Um, very fun. Uh but yeah, I think this goes well in here. Again, you know, putting this on, say, you know, Souls of the Faultless or, I don't know, any, any, any kind of your creatures makes them obviously immediately hard to deal with because of that very cheap regeneration. Uh, a single Festival of the Guild Pact, X mana and white, uh, to prevent the next X damage that would be dealt to you this turn and draw a card. Yeah, I mean, I think I would prefer just normal, like, you know, like, fo uh, well, not Fog. Fog is green, obviously. Like, Holy Day, um, just to do one white and prevent everything. Um, I mean, it gets you a card, I suppose. Like, if you really, really need to, you could just pay this just for a single white mana and just draw a card, I guess. Um, also, I mean, it does it 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 does um prevent non combat damage as well. So if like someone aims a burn spell, you can do that, I suppose. Uh, yeah. So I suppose it has some utility. Um, it's it's okay. Uh, single mortify. Really sad. There's only one mortify in the stack because the this is the also of power uncommon. One colors, one white, one black. Instant destroy a creature in enchantment. That's great. You know that's just, <laughs> that's that's just great. If you wanted to improve this deck, just add three more mortifies and you're laughing. Um, yeah, super super good card. Um, don't really have much more to say. It's just super good. Uh, two castigates, one white, one black sorcery. Um, an opponent reveals their hand. Choose a non land card from it and then exile it. Um, so yeah, it's like coercion. It's like, um, so hard to cast, but cheaper. So it sort of bounces out, but with the extra benefit of just exiling the card, which is good because, uh, in, in Ravnica block, um, there's quite a few cards that care about things being in graveyards, obviously. So like, you know, Golgari cards, mostly that dredge. Um, yeah. So you would definitely kind of want to exile, uh, any card instead of discarding it and putting it in kind of easy access in a, in a graveyard. Yeah, Castigate's okay. Uh, and then two Ors of Basilica, which is the guild bounce land. Yep, we talked about these a lot. And uh, the guild uh, the guild hall, uh, Ors Hover, the Church of Deals, uh, gives you one colourless, or you can pay three colours, one white and one black, to make target player lose one life, and you gain one life, which is, it's expensive, but you know if you've got nothing else to do with your mana, like, why not? Uh, so yeah, so what could have been? So uh, I think the card selection in this deck is okay. Um, it feels I don't know. I'll get I'll get to the summary and I'll talk about why why I think about it overall. But uh, some options here we could have had Dows in Gloom. This is just a kind of like a burn spell that does two damage to a creature and you get two life back. Faith's Fetters is um, uh, basically like a rest, um, and it's like one of these comes into play auras. Uh, it's a rest that gives you four life, which is good. 
I think and it can go on anything actually, not just creatures. It can go on artifacts and and stuff to shut them down. Uh, Order of the Stars is a card I'm actually very fond of. One white mana for a naught one with Defender. When it comes into play, you choose a color and it has protection from that color, so it just makes it like a, just a really really good blocker. Uh, Shadow Lance I think could have given the deck a bit of muscle maybe. Um, it's one white mana aura. Goes on a creature, they get first strike, and you can just pay one color and one black to give them plus two, plus two to end of turn. So, like, a really good thing to put on, like, the morning thrall. Uh, Keening Banshee is just a 2 2 flyer for four. When it comes in, give something minus two, minus two to end of turn, which is good. Just again, just kind of like a kill spell um, on a, you know, on a, you know, decently sized flyer i suppose um an alternate rare i thought instead of the skeletal vampire the skeletal vampire is okay i think angel of despair would have gone better because angel of despair is like this really iconic also card three colors double white double black so i mean expensive obviously yes seven mana but it's a five five flyer when it comes into play destroy any permanent it's just that's nice and big and flashy and cool and we just like angel of despair uh so in summary i think it's okay um you know, it has like the you know the this theme of well, it's kind of torn between two things because it's trying to do the sacrifice thing with uh, your haunt creatures, but the thing is, um, you know, we're in the second set here of the block, um, so the card pool is just not that good to to do that like to focus only on haunt and haunt is like kind of a weird mechanic anyway. Um, so it's like half the deck is trying to do the haunt sacrifice thing, and then the other half is doing the um you know, the, what we'd consider more traditionally white-black, which is, um, you know, draining life and kind of doing it, putting up like a kind of a pillow fort and while getting towards like some sort of efficient, um, efficient small creatures. I don't know. Um, so I think it's okay. Um, I think it would have played all right at the box. So I think I did get this deck, but then, um, just, I think immediately deconstructed it. Um, I think it would have been all right. I think it would have been all right. Maybe, I don't know, lacking in a few... I think it might have been hard to close out games with this because you've got a lot of defensive options but not many ways to really win, I don't think. Because um, like a lot of the creatures in this deck are actually fairly small. I think it'd be quite a slow game with a lot of life drain and and so on. But that's just my opinion after looking at the deck. What did you think of the deck after seeing it? Did you have this deck and did you play it? Did you make changes to it? Um, if you've got any stories or opinions about this deck, please put a comment below. I'd love to read those. But I'll be back next time. I'll look at the next Guild Pack pre-constructed deck. Uh, but until then, thank you for watching and have a great day.